guys, so I'm super excited to be here filming today. I haven't filmed for like two weeks so it's just really nice for me to sit in front of my camera and just chat about makeup. I feel like I haven't actually spoke about makeup in so long so I'm just sat here in a casual t-shirt with my makeup done, my hair done. It's like about 7 or 8 o'clock right now. I did just apply my makeup and I didn't like set it or anything with powder because I'm probably gonna take it off straight after I finish filming. So we should actually get into the video right now. So this is gonna be a video all about products that I regret buying. And somebody suggested that I did a favorites video, but I was like, oh, I don't have that many products to talk about, so there's not much point in me doing that. And then they suggested that I did a products I regret buying video. And at first I was like, oh, but I hate talking negative about things. This was supposed to be a channel of positivity. And to be honest, I didn't think I had that many products that I don't like until I started going through my drawers. I realized there were actually so many things that are sat in my drawers and that I never ever ever used because I bought them and I didn't like them. So they just sat there. And I realised that it would probably be a good idea to film this just so that you guys are kind of aware about these products too and you don't go out and waste your money on them like I did. I have a wee box full of things here to talk about. Most of them are makeup and I think there's like one or two hair things. So I'll begin with a foundation that I was very disappointed in because I don't feel like I talk about foundations much on my channel. As far as I'm aware of, I've only ever used BB creams as foundation in tutorials. But this foundation is the Maybelline Dream Nude Air Foam foundation and it was new when I bought it. And the first problem that I came across with this was how the heck do I apply it? I thought it was going to be like a spray thing, not like a mousse. I guess I should show you guys how it comes out. So you have to shake it up. And it comes out like this and loads comes out at once. Yeah, I only like held it down for like one second and all this came out. And then I was like, uh, yeah, so what do we do with it now? Do I use a sponge? Do I use a brush? Do I use my hands? You know, to like blend it in. Like what do you do with a product that is formulated like this? I'd like never experienced using a product like this before and I can't remember how I actually applied it the first time I used it. So, but if you guys have an idea on how you would apply this, then let me know in the comment section below and then I'll have to try it out. The next problem was the colour of this foundation. So I got the colour 042 Dark Beige and I don't always buy Maybelline foundations, so I didn't really know what colour I was, but obviously there was tape around it in the shop so I couldn't like test it or anything and I don't think there was any testers for it either so that was another problem so all that was going on was the outside of the packaging and I put it next to my face and to be honest it looks spot on for my skin colour until you squirt it on the back of your hand and the same for your face and it's getting darker as we sit here so I'm just gonna rub it in so you guys can see oh my goodness Look how dark it is! Look how far that like one second pump has spread. That's just ridiculous. And like it's soaking wet, I'd have to blend it all the way down my arm if I actually wanted to leave it on there. So I'm just going to wipe a bit off. So not only that, but it oxidises too and if you don't know what it means when a foundation oxidises it means that it just becomes darker and darker and darker which is so annoying so when you put the foundation on in the morning it could look the completely correct skin tone skin colour and shade and everything but then like halfway through the day you're just gonna look a totally different colour. I'm gonna leave this section of it here on my hand like right by my knuckles here. You can see how dark it is there hopefully and then I'm gonna leave it there and show you how it, it oxidises after I've spoke about the next product. So those are the problems that I had with this product so that one has just been sat in my drawer for probably a year now. I'm going to keep switching it up so I don't talk about foundation, foundation, foundation. I'm going to go foundation, eyes, foundation, eyes, stuff like that. So like kind of just a random order. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is this mascara and this one is a waterproof mascara. It's the Max Factor Masterpiece 
waterproof high definition mascara and if you're looking for a great waterproof mascara if you literally want to get in the pool and just go swimming with some mascara on then this is great if you want to put your face under the water and just expect your mascara not to come off because honestly this won't come off but if you still want some eyelashes left at the end of the day then don't buy this <laughs> honestly I have three my mum sister and me all got one and we just can't use it because it's impossible to remove from your eyes. The applicator and the actual formula of it is great. I think it's a little bit liquidy when you apply it to your eyelashes. Other than that, the actual mascara is okay. It's just because it's so waterproof that you're literally gonna end up with no eyelashes if you wear this for like two days and are removing it each day because it's that difficult to remove. Maybe I was using like the wrong remover but normally I can get my mascara off with a wipe. This, I, I would sit there for like 10 minutes just rubbing my eyes, causing more wrinkles around my eyes, causing loss of eyelashes, it just was not pleasant. Like I said, if you are looking for a really good waterproof mascara that is absolutely no way in hell gonna come off from your eyelashes then this is the one for you it's the max factor masterpiece high definition waterproof mascara next i'm going to talk about a few liquid lipsticks and i'm actually able to compare these liquid lipsticks to a good liquid lipstick now because i received my gerard cosmetic ones yesterday which are great i'm going to do a review on my channel at some point of the gerard liquid lipsticks the ones i'm going to talk about here that i don't really like are the makeup revolution ones and the makeup academy ones now i only have one of the makeup revolution ones and two of the makeup academy ones but that is enough to tell me not to buy any more so if you want to use this as eyebrow products then it's great but on the lips absolutely hell no they are it's just so strange like you put it on and it applies not so badly they're quite thick i think this one was a little bit thinner but it just like kind of went a bit less opaque in some areas of my lips. Um, I think the Makeup Academy ones, the, my problem with these was that after like 10 minutes of wearing them they would like crumble off my lips and I tried them with lip balm, doing a lip scrub and everything and nothing I could do would make them work so don't buy those. That's a waste of like £4 of your money, you might as well just get the Gerard ones which you can buy off Beauty Bay for like £9.50 or something. And then this one, I found it just stayed really tacky, like I would press my lips together and it would just transfer from one lip to the other and it would just be a mess, so... So far, I've not experienced any good drugstore liquid lipsticks, so... Yeah, that's a bummer, but I will be keeping these to probably use on my eyebrows because I like to do some awesome coloured eyebrows every now and again. But no, I would not be able to go out wearing these for the day. And so I definitely regret buying them. So I'll quickly finish off with the face products. So this Ole Complete Care Touch of Foundation, even complexion foundation thing. I think it's like a CC cream, but I'm not sure. It's like a moisturiser. But my problem with this was actually super strange um i like wore it for school one day and then i noticed it was like not like peeling off my skin but like rolling up into like these weird balls like i don't know how to describe it like you know when you have moisturizer on your legs and then you shower and it's not washed off properly and then you rub it with a towel and you get all those weird stringy Ugh, gooey, not gooey, but just strange bits on your leg, you probably won't know what I'm talking about. But this happened with this foundation and it was so weird. It would dry, super patchy, it would oxidise, and it was just a hot mess. As for colour, this one oxidises too. So this is the fair one. And Ole, I'm pretty sure it's quite an expensive brand. 
I don't remember buying it. I think my nan gave it to me or something. I'll place this one beside the other one and we'll see how that one oxidizes too. It does rub into the skin and it feels really nice and just like a moisturiser. So that is the second one here. And another foundation that I wasn't really happy with. Not really sure what I expected from this one because it was pretty cheap and it wasn't really drugstore. Um, if you've ever heard of W7 which is actually called Wall Paint Cosmetics then you know that they're like a relatively cheap brand and they're sold in like B&M. Sometimes their products are okay, like their mascaras and stuff, they're perfectly fine but I definitely wouldn't like buy a foundation from them again. I use their Honolulu bronzer which is absolutely fine but this foundation, the problem was that it just applied really patchily um patchily is that a word it just applies like in a really patchy way on my skin and also if you look at the bottle it's not a neutral it's more like a yellow tone foundation and i'm aware that my skin is more neutral toned instead of like yellowy or cool tone but the actual foundation is extremely pink toned which was super annoying it would not for the life of me match my skin tone it was no way in hell like what was on the outside of the bottle so that was really annoying too and you just can't wear it and it also oxidizes like it wasn't this dark when i put it on one second ago and i'll just keep updating you on the oxidation of these foundations okay so the next product i was super disappointed with i had quite high expectations for this product because i saw that Shanik so used a mascara. Um, it is the brand Ico. I should tell you what the product is. It is so this is the Ico Skinny Liquid Eyeliner in the shade Navy. So I had super high expectations for Ico because Shanik so used their mascara and absolutely loves it. So I was shocked to find that I didn't like this product. I didn't actually buy it, so I don't know how much it was, but it did come in a magazine that cost me like three pound. But I think the eyeliner is actually quite expensive. Just because it's from a magazine doesn't mean that the product quality should be any different from something that you might buy online. Firstly, it's supposed to have a skinny tip brush. Now, in my opinion, this is not skinny at all. The definition of skinny for me would be something like this one on the bottom and that is the Essence Super Fine Liquid Liner. Really, it's just not skinny at all to start with and then as you apply it, it's really dark. It just almost looks black honestly I've wore it like in public and only if you wear blue eyeliner people notice and then nobody could even tell so that is the first thing the problem that actually occurred which caused me to dislike this was when I first applied it obviously I had really high expectations and I expected a perfect wing and I expected it to go on really smoothly and obviously have just like a nice even layer of this navy blue eyeliner but no I don't know if you can see on this a few lines on the back of my hand but can you see that it goes really dark where you've actually started applying it and then it fades out into this kind of more turquoisey blue which is super annoying because you really struggle to get an even layer of the colour on your eye and also the first time that I applied it I obviously had to do a few layers to build up the colour because it kept fading into this lighter shade of blue and as I was applying it the felt tip just kind of kept bringing the product off of my eye it was so weird like I've never had that happen to me before except with this one like I'd be putting some on and then it would be like coming back off and I was so confused so it was the strangest thing and here you can see that it's just not really coming out of the felt tip very well either which could be something to do with the reason for it just like removing the eyeliner as I was applying it oh it was actually going out very well but as I'm just like painting it on the back of my hand sometimes it it's kind of just keeps drying on me and it's not working very well so I didn't really buy it but if I had bought it then I would have been really disappointed and I would not buy a product like this again and as I was wiping off then you could tell that the formula was terrible because it kind of like 
came off in like it kind of peeled off like it didn't like just rub off it kind of like peeled off in like little sections Ugh. So back to lip products this is a product that I talked about in my haul at the start of the year and it is the Pro Melts Lip Gloss from Freedom Cosmetics in the shade Pro Melts Wanted. The problem that I had with this, I think I had said it in the haul, but in case you didn't watch that video, um, when I applied it, it was fine. Didn't dry as a liquid lipstick like I had expected it to from what I'd read online. So it didn't really work properly and then when I removed it after wearing it for like half an hour, it left my lips stained such a crazy bright pink shade of pink which I wasn't too pleased with because I had work the next day and didn't really want bright pink lips and I did email the company I was like you might want to look at the formulation of this product because it left me with a bright pink stained lips and she was like okay thank you for letting us know so that is that product I don't want to talk bad about Freedom Cosmetics because they are such a small brand and I don't want to put you guys off buying it but for the first product that I bought from the brand I wasn't so happy but I still do want to try more products from the brand but I just don't want you guys to be put off from buying other products from this company and it, all the other liquid lipstick things might be absolutely gorgeous, perfectly fine. So don't allow this video to just give your sudden opinion on these products, just bear it in mind when purchasing. Um, also, quick update, how I told you with the peely thing with the Olay CC cream. I don't know if you can see here, but it's starting to peel on the back of my hand. It's so crazy. I wish you guys could see this. It's like coming off into a really muddy shade, like as I push my finger on it. Now you should be able to touch your face. Um, so that is what happens when it's on your face. It does this weird money thing and now there is none left on the back of my hand. I'm glad you guys actually got to witness that. Next is this Makeup Academy concealer. It's a good concealer in itself. It's just the shade that was a problem. It's supposed to be neutral but when you open it it's so pink. It's, I don't know if you can tell because sometimes it doesn't look pink, I think it's only on the back of your hand. I think that it's only when it's applied that it looks really pink. It's super creamy, um, and I don't really like concealers of this consistency anyway, but I hope you can see that it's super pink right there. It's the thing in the middle where the Olay was. I only have three products left to talk about, and the next one is this nail varnish. Now, it's a beautiful colour and my mum bought me this, so I really don't want to say that I don't like it. But, so the colour is really beautiful and it's the Essence Colour and Go. Um, it's in the shade Hello Rosy, but the problem is that it is a sparkle and sand effect. Now, it looks really pretty and I know it's supposed to be a sand effect, but really? Who wants a texture of sand on their fingernails? It just feels like you have a piece of sandpaper just like on your fingernail. So for me it's not the most pleasant thing, the colour is nice, just I don't get the sand texture effect. Maybe some younger people will, but for me as like a 16 year old that is not my thing. But I'm still keeping it in my collection because I think it's a cute idea, just not really practical. So I said I was going to talk about a hair product and this is it. Now you might be super shocked about this or you might already have experienced it and oh my god the horrifying thing is this. You're gonna think whoa that's Batiste dry shampoo. Like yeah I love Batiste dry shampoo just not this one. It is the heavenly volume dry shampoo. Oh my god. Heavenly volume? How can they describe the feeling of this as heavenly? Oh my god, it's horrifying. Don't get me wrong, it gives your hair a lot of volume, but it also it leaves your hair looking super white. It doesn't feel good. When you're rubbing it into your hair, you know, to get rid of the greyness, it's just all crumbly and you can't get a brush through your hair, you can't put your fingers into your hair because it just goes so strange. Like. 
If you're looking for volume, get this. But if you still want your hair to feel good, then don't get this. So this is the Batiste dry shampoo and is the Heavenly Volume dry shampoo. Don't buy it. Do not buy it. If I work, do not buy it. Don't waste your money. Even when you like rub your hands in your hair, it leaves this horrible texture. Ugh. <laughs> it leaves this horrible texture on your hands and and it's just not pleasant. So the final product that I have here is a product that I actually used to use here on my channel. So it is this Morphe dip brow pomade thing for your eyebrows and mine is in the shade Bare. And it's a really nice product, it's great for your brows, but the shade of it, in here it looks like a really nice cool brown. Well, it does in my eyes anyway. And it looks like an okay colour here on swatch on the back of my hand, but for some reason when I put it into my eyebrows they look kind of orange like ginger orange and I don't have a problem with ginger hair it's just when my eyebrows are ginger and my hair is like brown that just personally for me isn't a good combination so I've stopped using this for my eyebrows I can still use it for a brown winged liner but just not for the actual use of the product so I don't regret buying it completely because I did used to use it and enjoy using it but then after a while I realised that my eyebrows looked really orange. I don't know if it oxidised and looked orange or had it had looked orange throughout the whole day. So yeah, that is that product. My hair is super warm. So I think those are all the products that I have to talk about in this video. I did really enjoy talking about those products. In the future, if I find any more products that I don't like, then I will probably make another one of these. I really want to do a favourite products video to counteract this video. So hopefully I'll be able to get around to doing that when I have a few more new products. Maybe it will be closer to the summertime. But yeah, feel free to share your opinions on any of these products if you've tried them out, if you hate them too, or dislike them, or if you love these products and you found a way to make them work for you, or if they are just a good product for you in general somehow, or if you think I'm like doing something wrong with them, then definitely let me know in the comments down below before I put some of these products in the bin. I would actually really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I would love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and leave me suggestions in the comment section of what else you would like to see on my channel and I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel and hopefully I will see you in my next video.